Well, 40% of people currently experiencing homelessness in Australia are under 24 years of age. That's the reason advocates are calling for funding to build 10 new shelters known as youth foyers to be included in the budget this time next week. Well, Foyer Foundation CEO Liz Cameron-Smith joins us now from Sydney. Good morning to you, Liz. Uh, Good morning. First of all, can you just talk me through some of the numbers of youth homelessness before we talk about these shelters that you've got in mind? Sure, Lisa. So at the moment in Australia, we are facing an enormous crisis on three fronts. We have a housing crisis, a cost of living crisis and a domestic violence crisis. And at the heart of that are 40,000 young people who have nowhere to live, they're alone and they are seeking support. So it's, a, it's an impending crisis that really affects not just the future of these young people, but also the future of our country and our economy. So talk to me about these uh, accommodation ideas, the, the 10 that you would hope that the federal government could find its way to fund. Sure. So a youth foyer is essentially a safe place where young people in this situation can live for up to two years. It is more than a roof over a young person's head. It also integrates education and employment and life skills supports so that within two years, a young person has the skills they need and the confidence they need to really thrive and be independent adults into the future. And we know that the model gets results. So we have done research that has found that 80% of young people exiting a youth foyer end up with stay, safe and stable accommodation. Uh, they are 65% engaged in education and the others are in employment. And we also know that they're 60% less likely to engage with the justice system. So it really gets results across a whole range of outcome areas, not just housing. So when you say you know it works, is that because there are similar ideas that are already being done or? So youth foyers have actually existed in Australia for 20 years. They're not a new concept. We currently have 16 foyers across the country and they have a really strong track record of success. So that is the reason why we are calling for an additional investment in a further 10 foyers nationally. We know right now there are 33 communities across the country calling for new youth foyers. And what we have proposed is a list of those that are actually ready to build right now and meet the urgent needs that we're seeing in communities across Australia as we speak. Liz, just tell me a little bit about Foyer Foundation that you're the CEO of. I'm not familiar with it. Sure. So as a foundation, we actually don't run the foyers ourselves. Our job is really to grow the reach and impact of foyers, to build the evidence base, to make sure that every foyer is operating at a high standard through an accreditation process. And we also join up all of the different service providers across Australia uh, with philanthropists and investors that are seeking to see more youth foyers in communities around, us, around the country. Liz, one of the problems that we often face when we're talking to people like yourself is that there's just not the staff out there to try and make these things happen. So what's your response to that? Because I imagine these organisation, these accommodation blocks would require people there helping. Of course, yes, they do. So at every youth foyer, they have youth coaches, which are in many ways playing the role that many of us take for granted that our parents play, helping to navigate that really critical transition point into adulthood. And we certainly need more youth coaches, more social workers across the country. Um, but ironically, actually investing in youth foyers is creating a future pipeline of staff just like this. Uh, we see many young people who've been living in a youth foyer go on to have careers in, in social work and other care industries, which we know is a growing need and gap in the Australian economy. So giving these young people a chance to actually build careers into this space is also building the workforce for the future. Liz Cameron-Smith, thanks for joining us this morning. Good luck with it all a week out from the budget. Thanks, Lisa.